Violence is within almost everybody um, and that's what makes it scary because most human beings have a propensity to violence, have the capability to do violence. Um, I'm very much against bullying um, and I'm very much against violence in, in a lot of ways but there have been a couple of two or three times in my life when I have been violent and it's very very, when I have been it's very shocking to me. Well, I think most of the social expression of violence is either as a result of alcohol, um, which is for some reason in our societies the legitimised drug. Why? I don't understand, because I think it's a shit drug and I think it's a very dangerous drug. Other kinds of violence are the result of frustration and anger um, and people get frustrated when they feel they're not recognised or when they're not heard. Um, and they get angry when they're disappointed and they get disappointed when they can't have what they think they want. For instance, in school shootings, obviously it's a product of incredible frustration and alienation. And it's also a case of somebody having a really bad idea and then everybody copying it. You know, the incidents of school shootings were not high before Columbine. I mean, there were people like Charles Whitman, who was a Texas sniper in 1966, but they tended to be much more, you know, he was an early, he was a school shooter, he was about 22, 23, and he shot about 12 people dead at the University of Texas in 1966. So this is not a new phenomenon. Um, but what's happened is it's spread from America to Europe, which um, is a bit of a disaster. It's obviously a terrible thing, and it's obviously something that is learned behaviour, because before... 1996, you know, it didn't really happen. And then there's also, um, I mean, then there's also kind of creative violence, which is something different. Um, and, and it's very hard. I mean, you have in punk rock, you have the kind of, you know, you have the anarchistic, you have to destroy in order to create. But you have to be very careful with that. First off, you have to create after you destroy. And a lot of punk rock didn't bother to do that. Um, so you have to have an idea of, you know, it's very fun to destroy. It's a lot of fun to destroy things if you're young, but then you have to do the hard work. You know, it's all very well wanting to have a revolution and change everything and overturn everything, but what are you going to do afterwards? And if you have a revolution, how are you going to avoid being same boss, you know, new boss, same as the old boss? I mean, youth has to be rebellious. A small section of youth has to be rebellious, otherwise nothing ever gets changed. And things have to be changed. That's, you know, in the nature of life. You know, the old has to die and the new have to take their place in the world. So fine, I mean, I'm a great believer in change. But I'm not a believer in revolution. Because having read about a lot of revolutions, they always seem to end in one system of um, a tyranny replacing another. There's very few revolutions I've been able to see that have ended positively. Um, I suppose we should talk about punk and violence. One of the very first punk shows I went to was The Clash at uh, the Royal College of Art in London. And it was a fascinating show. It was in a very brutal 60s building, concrete. And The Clash were very good. They weren't as macho as they were later. They were quite fragile and quite desperate. And um, people were throwing glasses at them from the, st from, the, from the audience, you know, full glasses, because people didn't like this punk rock stuff because it was very provocative and very challenging. That was the whole point about punk rock. You went to punk rock show and you were challenged because it was very new and it was very, it was, it was you know, it, it was, you know, which side of the bed are you, are you lying on? Are you with us or are you, are you against us? It was very polarizing. And at the end of the show, I'll never forget this, Joe Strummer got off the stage, leapt off the stage with Sid Vicious and went and attacked the people in the audience who'd been throwing glasses. And there was a huge fight right by me on the floor of the venue amongst all the beer and all the glass. I couldn't believe it. I'd never seen a group do that before. I'd never seen a member of a group come down off the stage and attack the audience. And um, it was quite shocking. But also it was sort of... It was... I always saw punk as a theatre of violence, which is a very dangerous thing to do because a lot of people who come along and see that don't realise that this is a performance 
and that maybe, okay, maybe it's crossed the line, but it's still a performance and it's an extension of performance. It's not necessarily how you should be. Um, but of course, punk did come be, become very violent, but then Britain was very violent at that time in the late 70s, um, as in fact Germany was as well. It was a very violent time, and your violence took a very different form, which was Bader Meinhof. Um, and I thank God, really, that I was a young radical in Britain um, and had punk rock rather than Bader Meinhof, because, hmm, you know, for obvious reasons, really. And the problem is that one can be reasonable and one can understand suicide bombers as being the way that the powerless get a voice and get noticed. But do you know what? They're fucking blowing people up. I mean, that is really insane. That is overriding the basic human survival instinct. Now, that to me is the hallmark of an extreme totalitarian ideology, however you want to slice and dice it. The only other people to do that are the kamikaze Japanese, or various elements of the Hitler Youth, you know, and so I regard the a jihadist as the same as that. And in the end, I'm sorry, but it's fucking dreadful. And they are nihilistic. It's a death cult. And that's the way I look at it, you know. And, and nothing, to me, nothing justifies that kind of violence. It really doesn't. I'm sorry. It's all very well saying, oh, the US blow up people, you know, and, you know, we're doing it in revenge for this. But the whole point is about terrorism. Most of the time, it's so stupid. They never attack the people they really should attack. They always attack the general public. Well, it's not the fucking general public's fault. You know, I've always thought terrorism is so stupid. There's almost been no intelligent terrorism ever, except maybe for a year, the weather underground in America who actually blew up buildings and didn't hurt people. You know, I mean, I don't approve of terrorism anyway. I don't, I'm not, um, seeking to uh, legitimise it or to say it's a good thing to do. I'm just saying that most of the time it's fantastically unintelligent. And that's what I think about it. It gets, you know, so it gets media attention. For what? Doing what? Blowing up people? Great. Oh, I see a body part here. That's really going to help our cause. Sorry. That's what I think about it. You know, I mean, I, I just think it's, um, you know, I loathe it. And we in Britain have brought, you know, we were brought up with IRA terrorism. You know, didn't make anybody feel differently about it. I think just go on with it, really. You know, go on with life. So when the seven, when the, um, when the uh, bombings happened on the underground, um, I called up my mother, who still lives in London. I said, are you OK? And she said, yes, fine, you know. And I said, well, you know, aren't you a bit worried? And she said, no, I lived through the war. I lived through the IRA. I lived through this lot, you know. People just get used to it. And they don't want to think about it anyway. You know, people aren't interested in that. You know, the, the underlying reasons. Maybe they should, but that's not the way to convince them, is it, really? Blowing up people. You know, people aren't going to say, oh, you've blown us up. Great, now we'll listen to you and we'll really think about your ideas. And by the way, yes, we really would like Sharia law in our country. We, were, we really like, would like every single woman in our country to wear a veil. We really would like homosexuals to be stoned and, and put under walls. Thank you very much. You are really teaching us something. Fuck off. You know, I feel very strongly about this. You know, I don't want... A medi I don't want to live in a medieval totalitarian system, however it is. Yeah, and there's always people, whether it be in Germany during the Hitler regime and whether it be the jihadists, who want to make people live under a medieval totalitarian systems. And, you know, that's what really has to be resisted above everything else. People trying to control other people in that horrible kind of way. And that's the real violence. That's the worst violence. And religious violence as well, the violence done by religion. The Americans learnt from Vietnam, as far as the Iraq war is concerned. One of the reasons that, the Iraq, that there was such a problem with Vietnam in America is because the images on the television news. And, you know, the establishment in America was really, really rattled by all the protests against the Vietnam War in the 60s. You know, those kids really did something, and that was fantastic, and it should never be taken away from them. Everybody thinks, oh, hippies, you know, it's just peace and love and smoking a lot of dope. People really did, you know, in America it was really serious. It wasn't so serious in Britain because we didn't have the war. War is state-sanctioned violence, right? War is actually saying we now legitimise all those forces that are usually repressed.
right? Because we have to work very hard to control the innate capacity to violence. So it's not surprising to me that, you know, there are levels of youth violence in England because we're in war. You know, does nobody ever think about that? You know, people just don't understand the, the impact of being at war. You know, England is still in Iraq. You know, Britain is still in Iraq, I'm sorry, you know. Um, I think that probably the creative use of violence is probably something like under 5% of the total incidence of violence. I just don't think people are, have worked that out very well, really. Um, I think violence is a very dangerous, it's a very, it's a central part of, of human nature, it's a central part of human society, um, and it's something that has to be very carefully watched and controlled, um, both personally and in the society in general. Okay, well I hope it's not too bad about the jihadists. I'll probably get a death threat now, but anyway, never mind. I'm not going to have them tell me what to fucking do.